lecture here, we're going to look at a general comparison between scientific published research and anecdotal information. Being able to distinguish the difference between the two may seem initially uh, very obvious, but a lot of times people try to blur the lines between these two. So let's look at each of these and define each to begin. First off, scientific research, what defines this? It's a systematic investigation, interpretation, and evaluation of data. The results obtained from a small group through scientific studies are shared, and new information is revealed with respect to diagnosis, treatment, and reliability of applications. So scientific research doesn't mean it's to occur in a sterile lab here. Uh, there's other scientific studies that can occur, uh, but they all involve a systematic investigation is the key part here. And they're evaluating data, and that can be in small groups, that can be with um, different scientists across different parts of the world, um, the key part here is that interpretation and evaluation of data. Now in comparison to that, or actually in contrast, anecdotal information is evidence collected in a casual or informal manner, relying heavily or entirely on personal testimony. So stories you may hear, postings that you may see, things you may read on a blog, things you may just read on the internet, uh, that's just from someone just posting, uh, that's anecdotal information. In addition, going back to the scientific research, there's also that collaboration and typically a peer review process. So people are able to compare um, and relate that are in the field to what is found. And total information, just one person kind of putting something out there and just claiming it as truth. Now keep in mind, uh, population size or N uh, of one doesn't support a pattern. So just because someone had success with one plant doesn't necessarily mean that's going to work for all plants. Similar species can be used to draw some conclusions and gain ideas. For cannabis, chrysanthemums are used sometimes for photoperiod development. Uh, but there can be unforeseen interactions and complications, which is why studies of the same species is recommended. So these mean good for initial ideas or, or research, but when you're actually coming down to developing that theory, you want to use the actual uh, test subjects there and the actual plants and species or cultivar as close as possible. Now, a scientific study does require use of a control group. This acts as a source of comparison. Many conditions are kept consistent except the one being tested, and this is true for scientific studies. Procedures conducted is well documented and easily repeatable, and that's a key part with scientific studies. So we see our control in our experimental group. Here the experiment uh, will students' test scores be affected by distracting sounds in a testing environment. So you have that control group compared to that experimental group. Keep in mind, we're not just testing one student and one student. There's a collection of students and a collection of students. And this would kind of be the general sense or the general idea behind a scientific study. An anecdotal study, and I put study in quotes here, they're often focused on what changes and does not ensure other parameters are kept consistent. They can be a little bit focused on just one thing. We could be looking at different fertilizer rates, but not taking into account that some plants might be more shaded than others, some might be on the edge, uh, the soil may not be consistent in this area. Uh, again, all things uh, worth consideration. Anecdotal studies are also commonly performed on small population sizes. And the key part here is they're typically hard to recreate testing conditions, meaning if someone does test this and prove something or have data to support something, typically it's very hard to recreate those conditions so that it can be repeated uh, and that data can be supported and backed up. And that's typically not true of any anecdotal study. We're definitely with our scientific studies, keeping the procedure well documented and repeatable is a mark of a good scientific study. Hopefully this gives you that kind of good comparison between understanding what a published scientific research is compared to just standard run-of-the-mill anecdotal information.